Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Hey, 2024 is one of those years when growers are thinking double crop soybeans. Winter cereals are ahead of schedule, and there's an opportunity to plant a soybean crop in early July after winter wheat or barley. Embro Ontario grower Ian Matheson and his family have been growing double crop soybeans for almost 20 years. On this episode, Ontario soybean specialist Horace Bonner asked Matheson about what he's learned and the secrets to double crop success. Check it out. Ian, thank you for having us here today. It's great uh, on your beautiful farm. You guys have been double cropping soybeans for quite a number of years. How, how many years has it been roughly? I think we've been uh, close to 20 years now. Um, our dad had started uh, before I got home from college in 2004, I believe, for a year or two. So, yeah, we're, we're about that 20 years. Wow, year, wow, that's incredible. And, and Peter Johnson and Eric Richter were here actually about seven or eight years ago in this very field of barley looking at the idea of double cropping soybeans. And so since then, have, have you changed anything significantly from that time or you've just pushed forward and, and you've been pretty happy? Uh, we're always tweaking little things, um, yeah. whether it can be even just, you know, how to get the straw removal off the field faster to get the crop in faster. Um, Populations, maturities. I mean, we're, there's it's it's farming. There's always some yeah, some tweaking to do. Absolutely, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. So let's start with some of the basics. In your crop rotation, this double cropping idea is is kind of a yearly thing now. You, you you're not just doing this when you have a year like this where things are kind of early. You're doing it every year. So in that, are you using only barley? for the double cropping or do you try and get some winter wheat in too? Uh, so it's, it's basically turned into a system for us. Okay. Um, okay. It's a systems approach. Um, our rotation consists of corn, soybeans, winter barley and some winter wheat. Um, as far as the double crop beans, it's, a, it's planned out following the winter barley. Winter wheat can be a year to year thing depending on how early that mm -hmm. wheat crop can be and we've done it with uh, with mixed success and uh, following the, the wheat, the barley is obviously a better success because we're a week to 10 days right. earlier, maybe more harvest versus yes. the wheat. So um, yeah, it, it's become a, a system that we we count on. So a lot of guys this year are saying with the winter wheat that it's maybe a week to 10 days earlier. And that's what's kind of spurred on a lot of this conversation again. Is, is your barley the same? You, you think in a week early, something yeah, like that? I would agree. Um, Normally we count on getting at the barley by the 5th to 7th of July. I'm pretty confident we're going to be into June harvest this year. So, awesome. I mean, it could very well happen that we have beans in before the 1st of July. Wow, that would, that would just be great. So, now, having said that, let's say it was a different year. What's the latest in your experience you can grow double crop or plant double crop soybeans with, with a reasonable expectation of success? And again, you're in the Embro area yep. here. We yep. need to North make end that of Oxford. Yep. 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 Um, so typically, historically, our cutoff was always July 10th. That was okay. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, that was our cutoff. Um, as years have gone on, we've ratcheted our maturity back on the beans that we're growing. We're growing a double zero or even a triple zero. And uh, I'm comfortable up to about the 20th of July. Really? Okay. Uh, we've had beans left in the tank of the drill and uh, got rained out about that 20th. We've planted up to the 28th, had the right fall, and we can get them off. Um, oh, yes. Same thing can happen, though. We can get the backwards fall, and those beans are a nice plow down. Hmm, yeah, yeah. So uh, you've hit on a couple of interesting points there. Um, one thing that I'll just throw in from my experience, I, uh, the last number of years we've been trying to double crop uh, further north. And so the reason I bring that up, I think geography has a lot to do yeah. with it. And when I'm talking further north, I mean just north of Stratford, some people talk about the Highway 8 line, that if you're above that, you know, less than 3,000 heat units or 2,900 heat units, it's a tough uh, sell to make double crop soybeans work consistently. In my experience up there, you know, 50% of the time do we even have something to harvest. Yep. Never mind, you know, how many bushels. Yep. Usually it's less yep. than 20 for me. Yep. So that raises the question, 
what is your realistic expectation? I'm not asking for a specific, you know, uh, prediction this year, obviously, yeah. but just generally give us some idea. What kind of a number are you aiming for for bushels per acre? Um, a goal would be, I mean, it depends on planning date. When we're, yeah. Right. Um, but historically, if we get 30 bushels, we're more than happy. Okay. Um, okay. We quite often run between that 20 and 30. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense to me, and, and that's obviously profitable after, after the winter, winter barley, yeah, and that yeah. works out well. Yeah, no, I always figure we, we, our land cost is virtually zero at that point. That's right. allocated towards the cereal crop. Um, we're planting a cover crop regardless, so, you know, that planting right. pass is right. there. Makes sense. Um, it, it's, it's a minimal extra cost. But it's not as good as if you had gone in with like a, a, a forage oat crop, as far as maybe soil health goes. As Understood. you know, probably what you would what yeah, you would yeah, agree. Yeah, I, I understand what yeah. you're saying. So now, having said that, how do you deal with the straw? Like, do you, are you chopping it? Are you baling? Or what we do you guys um, the barley that we're growing has a lot of straw to it. Okay. We now grow a uh, variety that's a little bit shorter. We try to keep a growth regulator on it to keep it minimal. Um, I don't know if that really makes less straw. It makes shorter straw, but I, I do think it makes the same amount of straw as thicker stems. But um, the straw removal is our biggest challenge. Uh, okay. It's getting that, that straw to dry and bale relatively quick to get it off the field. Um, what we do is we, we now spread the straw and then uh, we have people come in with mergers or rakes, rake it back together and get it off the field get, as get quick as possible. There. So if we windrow it, those windrows, I mean, mm. a 40 foot windrow doesn't dry unless the barley is completely dead and usually the grain is dry long before the straw is. So let's hit on planting depth because often in the summer it's dry, right, obviously. And so what do you do? Do you go an inch and a half still and kind of hope for moisture or what's your answer to that? We actually, um, regardless of how dry it is, um, we've gone to setting the drill basically as deep as we can go. I see. Um, you get into the end of June or July, the ground is so warm, uh, there's always moisture there. We can plant that deep and the beans are up in less than a week. And so, so how deep when you said that? We deep? can be three and a half inches deep. Okay. And okay. Uh, we, we have found that's our best success. Yeah. Last year, as uh, July was kind of damp, um, we went uh, inch and a half to two inches. Uh, with mixed success, okay. the beans, I think what happened is we, where the, where the drill ran through, um, that area dried out faster because it was mm. a little bit looser and yeah, our yeah. emergence and germination just wasn't what I would have liked to have been. So I think regardless as to how dry it is, I think our constant Sound now is going to be we're sinking them deep and yeah. that they'll make it through. So you said, and I think these are the important part, uh, important points. A shorter maturing variety, you're saying double zero beans? Yeah. So that's, that. you know, typically we've talked about one maturity or two maturity groups less. You're in the two maturity group less yeah. than, than kind of yeah. your normal yeah. is, is what you feel comfortable yeah. with. And the reason for that is just to get them off in the fall. Right? Yes. These are November beans. That's anyway, right. right. We're, uh, we're end of November, mid-November uh, getting them off. And uh, we've harvested, you know, we were growing a 0.9 maturity for a while, and we would harvest them and have to poke them out of the back of the truck with a stick. So yeah. it wasn't exactly, we, don't, uh, no, we, don't want we weren't famous people at the elevator and we dropping no. those off, but uh, with the double zeros, we're quite often getting, you know, 15, 16, 17% beans on a reasonable day. Right. And, uh, you know, it's nice to deal with that versus the alternative. So final important point, I think, and that's why we're standing in front of this unit, Normally, you plant in 15-inch rows, but for double cropping, you're using this unit, yeah. seven and a half, yeah. at what population? Yeah, so uh, we're, when we switch to double crops with the drill, we, uh, we try to get to 280 to 300,000 seeds per okay. acre. Okay, yeah, and we have some nice data from Dr. Hooker that would uh, validate that, and, and some of my data too, you know, don't be afraid to go to 300,000. No. It sounds, no. sounds a little crazy, but 300,000 is, is actually no, a good No, I number. mean, double crop beans get to be, you know, maybe, maybe a foot tall. Like, yeah, there's, there's yeah. not a lot of height there, so you, you, you need, need more. You Canopy need closure, closure yeah. as the words of Eric Richter, is, is kind yeah. of key. 